Hello, my name is Austin Tamargo, and uh, today I want to tell you guys uh, the Marxist view on consciousness. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, Marx and Engels describe this uh, very good, uh, but personally, I really like the way uh, Mao Zedong talks about this in. Uh, I think it's on contradiction and on practice and uh, a lot of his works. You know, he talks really good about it. So um, first, the basic Marxist view, right, is that, you know, the material world and science and all of its laws, you know, the laws of nature, the laws of the universe, uh, you know, the science. This, the science of this world and the laws of this material world and this nature uh, was here before we received our consciousness as humans. And it still exists while we receive our consciousness as humans. And we are subjected to certain rules, you know, and certain laws of nature, you know, and science. So throughout history, uh, the, uh, man has come to think well, not man. Sorry, I I, I want to make clear. I try to use gender neutral pro, uh, pronouns, you know, as much as I can, of course. So, uh, you know, humanity, uh, as the as their relationship with their environment changed, and they begin to interact with their environment and uh, make tools and change their environment to suit their needs. Uh, this uh evolved their consciousness. And so basically Marxist theory is saying that uh, you're, some people say it begins with consciousness, right? But, uh, and that's like a dogmatic perspective that uh, the consciousness created everything. That's a, a, a really, uh, a lot of religions think like that. You know, it's, it's uh, called dogmaticism. And so this dogmatic outlook says that before everything there was consciousness. And this consciousness created everything. And the Marxist view is looking at this and saying, okay, well, uh, you know, it, it's the opposite. The material uh, world, you know, the universe, all the building blocks of the universe, everything was here before consciousness. And so, uh, you know, humanity, as, as they've evolved, they've evolved this perspective in their minds that uh, the consciousness is uh is uh over has dominion over the material world that uh if you have a certain consciousness you know like you know even in uh religions they say um if you keep god in your heart and your mind you know I, I i'm actually religious myself but i believe in science you know so um s some dogmatic uh religious people they say uh you know, if you just put God, have God in your mind and your heart all the time, then everything will, you know, then, you know, you'll be good, you know. And so some people try to think, oh, it's mind over matter. You know, you hear that perspective a lot. And, you know, as long as you have a good mind, then good things will come with you. You know, this new age uh, law of attraction. If you just think good thoughts and feel good, then everything will be better. This is this is the dogmatic outlook that says that consciousness is is uh is what creates the material and that the material is subservient to the consciousness. But the Marxist view is that uh our consciousness uh only comes from how we're able to manipulate our environment, you know, and uh our nature in in relationship to material production because material production you know, producing uh, the materials that we need in society, that's taking an active role in uh, changing the world for our needs as humans. So, you know, you can see this as an, a psychological effect to where we think that our consciousness is, is somehow, you know, it's, it's been a big thing throughout history. A lot of people think their consciousness is, uh, you know, what creates everything. And I do believe that willpower and consciousness have a played a great role and still always will continue to play a great role in motivating people to take this action and figuring out this action. But Marxist science states that all the world, all the uh, world and its laws, the material world is fully knowable. We can actually find out the laws of this universe 
and use them to our advantage. But that starts from having uh, an objective outlook, not a subjective one. You know, that, that starts from uh, admitting that this material world and this nature and the universe has been here before us. You know, it, it exists. Uh, we exist in it, you know. So we got we got to look at science, you know, and we got to uh, use the scientific method. We have to experiment with our environment. We have to, uh, you know, one of the principles of Marxism is uh, theory, practice, theory, practice, theory, practice. So you, you look at the word, right? You say, okay, this is uh, what, what it seems like, okay? <laughs> so let me test this theory. Like uh, I'm right now, I'm in the middle of the woods, you know? And uh, sometimes uh, where, I'm, uh, where I've been staying at, there needs to be wood for the fire. So I could think, okay, you know, I chop up some wood over here and uh, see if I can use it for the fire. Of course, I already know. But of course, you know, humans had to go to a point where they had to realize this. And they, they had to do it. You know, in the beginning, they didn't, uh, nobody just told them, <laughs> take that wood and put it and do this with it and then make a fire and you'll be warm. You know, nobody told them that. They had to use science, you know, scientific method. They had to experiment and they had to uh, manipulate their surroundings to see how they could better their material conditions. So, so that's what Marxism is about. It's about analyzing uh, the, the world and making a theory, you know, just like science. You start out with the hypothesis and then you make this theory and then you practice it, you know, because you have to practice. You know, that, that, that's what they call praxis and, you know, uh, what uh, Marxists and communists call it. And so, because if we don't experiment and we don't uh, take an active role in trying to change our world for the better, um, then all that theory and all that knowledge that you may have gained is worth nothing. You know, the point of accumulating this knowledge is to uh, test the variable, see what we can manipulate in our surroundings, in our society, in our environment to make a better outcome, you know, so uh, our material conditions are better. So let me see, uh, what was the next point of that? The material conditions, <laughs> the material conditions, yeah. So yeah, so Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here it is. Thank you for being patient with me, if you're still watching this. But so, not only is our uh, relationship to our environment and our surroundings uh, w one part of, uh, you know, what influences our consciousness and how, how we perceive the world, you know, but also our relationship with this uh, concept of the society that we invented. Our society as a collective influences our consciousness, but not only in that way, because uh, some rich people and a lot of uh, bourgeoisie, they try to say, oh, you know, we're all one collective nation. <laughs> oh, we're all collectively humans. We're all the same. But there's a big dis distinction in that uh, your relationship in the t like the totem pole of society and w w your role in society and, uh, you know, and and all that that influences your consciousness as well, you know. So we have this. There's two factors in this. There's our and, and they tie together because it's usually a ruling class, you know. As I've taught, as I say in most of all my videos, I re, it's like I'm reviewing this, you know. We used to have kings and lords and a feudalism, where you know, it's a ruling class of people, the lords and the ladies and the kings and whatnot, and they're ruling over the common people and the peasants. And, and all those people, and they extract most of the wealth and the workers who are making everything, you know, and they're the reason that society is running. They're usually given just enough to survive, you know, maybe a little bit extra sometimes, maybe, you know. <laughs> and so that continues today. We still have a capitalist class. There's a class of people, a lot of them were born rich, they have inherited wealth, and these people there they have a uh, what stalin would say is intellectual wavering you know they 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 see uh, a lot of people as numbers you know they see the world as a chessboard and to the, the workers to them are just pawns so this this strongly influences their consciousness and it ties into a psychological 
principle, you know, that, uh, you know, for I first came into to understand when I was really young and I was raised a Christian, you know, and I was in the church. And they told me, you know, you don't wake up. Uh, and this is this. I'm going to say how this relates. Right. They say, you know, uh, people don't wake up one morning and just decide to be a drug addict. You know, they try it once and then uh, they say, OK, you know, maybe it's the next day or whatever. They want to try it again. They're like, oh, I might as well try it one more time, you know, and it keeps on going. And then eventually they're hooked and they can't live without it, you know. And that's exactly what what is like uh, in the minds of these rich, greedy capitalists, these businessmen, these CEOs, these corporate people. To them, these numbers are like a game and they're addicted to it. Greed has possessed their mind and consciousness. And uh, it's, you know, th th that that's that's how, you know, uh, more like a dogmatic perspective would be. But just because some dogma dogmatic people in the world come to certain uh, uh, truths, you know, doesn't mean they're c completely right. You know, because some things we, we can see in the world and we can we can describe it. We it's like almost like we know what it is, but but we can't fully articulate it. But, the, you know, the human mind is powerful and it's easy to point things out. So dogmatic people would be like, oh, they're possessed by greed. Right. But the psychological perspective, because we study psychology, we're at this point in history where you, we can use psychology to better understand our society and better our material conditions. So we ha it's very uh, it's a very uh, basic principle of society. Everything everything I'm saying, how the consciousness of a person in, re in their relation to society and how that is all intertwined, you know. So these people that are born at the top, you know, and they make all this money, they, they, they see themselves above humanity. And to them, they're just, they're addicted. They're psychologically addicted to this game of making more money and hoarding money and hoarding wealth. And the only way that we can stop this is by the masses, the workers who make all the things in society collectively coming together and saying this needs to stop when we're taking over the government. You know, it has to be a worker's government. The, wor the working class of society has to make the laws and has to govern. Because the people who uh, their life focuses money, the, the, the goal of Marxism is for them to gradually fade out. You know, but we realize it has to, we have to go through certain transitions. We have to use scientific socialism and we have to consolidate workers' power. And when the workers control the government, the capitalist class is subjected to them. Not like we have it here where the capitalist class makes all our laws and subjects all the workers to, uh, you know, whatever whims they have, you know, and it's usually pretty greedy ones, you know, <laughs> they, they, they just want to make money and they want to give you as little as possible. So, yeah, so, so, so that's, so that's basically, that's basically a basic introduction to, uh, the Marxist view on consciousness, uh, is, is being, being, uh, aware at all times, you know, that our, our psyche, our consciousness is directly influenced by our material conditions. And see, 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 that's another thing I just remembered, right? The capitalist class knows that if they have this, if, if they keep the working class starving and nickel and diamond, living paycheck to paycheck, they, their minds are so worried about money, you know, and getting ahead. And, and they put all these hurdles so you never do. And they keep you in that state. A lot of people stay in that state for most, if not all, of their lives. And they do that on purpose because it's easier to subjugate somebody and to keep someone in, in that wage slavery. They keep us in in these jobs. And, you know... It's easier to keep them in that state if uh, there's uh, despair, you know, and, and, and if their material conditions are so low, they have to constantly be worrying about uh, how to survive. And see, that's the thing that's talked about in psychology, uh, you know, and so many psychologists I talked about, it, right? There's like a pyramid. Uh, the first pyramid, you have to progress each one to, to uh, be fully satisfied in life, right? And the first one, the second one is like emotional needs. And then on that, it goes to like uh, spiritual needs, like, 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 like your more higher world outlook, not necessarily spiritual. You could be uh, like, it could be like your greater sense of purpose or whatever. And it, and it goes up. But the first basic one is sort of basic survival. So if, you, if you're not uh, in, a, in a state where you're, a com when you're sur surviving, 
you know, and you don't have to worry uh, uh, every day about getting food and finding a place to sleep. If, if you're still in that state, you can't process the next levels that you need to process. I mean, some people can, uh, you know, uh, of course, in psychology, there's always exceptions and all this. But as a, as a collective and as, on an average, people who have to worry about surviving do not have time to sit there and try to um, um, uh, change the government and take over the government and improve all the material conditions. It's not easy, you know, and these rich people, people who are born privileged, you know, uh, with class pr privilege, uh, e e e even white privilege, you know, and even, even male privilege. It's things that we have to become aware of. But, but the thing is that capitalism is what fuels all these uh, different privileges, you know, because capitalism is a socioeconomic system that gives people the power to subjugate others, you know, and, and, and take their labor value and, uh, you know, subjugate them, you know. So whenever there's the ability to do that, that's going to be exploited and the people are going are gonna to consciously or unconsciously use their biases you know, in that subjugation, you know, uh, Fred Hampton, you know, Ma Malcolm X, you know, uh, uh, Martin Luther King, they, they all knew capitalism is the problem, you know, racism, racism, yeah, of course, it's still racism and sexism and, and, and uh, you know, discrimination against LGBTQ plus people is, is still going to probably be a part of uh, society for a while. You know, and it has for and it has before capitalism, but capitalism enables these people to systematically enforce these things. You know, so uh, we, once we stop capitalism, we can truly begin to make productive steps, you know, in the right direction. But while capitalism exists, as Fred Hampton, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, you know, and most all civil rights people in general, you know, have said, as long as capitalism exists, you know, we cannot fix all these problems in our society. This this main socioeconomic uh, economic structure has to be abolished, and we have to create a new worker uh, go workers government. So uh, yeah, so b basically, what I'm saying: these rich people, especially the ones born privileged and born uh, rich, they 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 literally cannot <laughs> understand this because their material conditions in the relationship with the society has affected their psyche to they think that they deserve to be in this position and other people's deserve to uh, suffer, you know, because that's just the way it is. You know, that's dogmaticism. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's on so many levels. You know, even I try to uh, talk about this a lot, even as uh, United States citizens, people born as a United States citizen, citizen so many so many of them including myself at times have been blissfully unaware about how our country has uh, done so much to damage other countries and to make so many people's other lives miserable and kill so many people entire villages in asia and entire tribes have been wiped out by bombs the bomb in the middle east the bombing the bombing whoever defies their capitalist authority and we live in this rich country because of that. We benefit from other suffering, whether we acknowledge it or not, as United States citizens and most of NATO citizens, you know, and a lot of other countries. But the United States is above all of them, and we know this. So, you know, once again, as I always say, I really hope uh, people will be inspired to take up the cause, to take up the cause of communism and the cause of the revolution so we can abolish capitalism in the United States and hopefully, you know, all across the world, you know, whether it's in our lifetimes or not. So last thing I'm going to say, I'm going to put this link. It's uh first thing I'm going to put down. It's, uh, uh, it's called Socialism in the 21st Century. This other activist, you know, person, he made up all these links. Uh, actually, it might be, it might be a, he or she or they, you know, they uh, they made up a bunch of links and, um, you know, of sources for more information about socialism and uh, the progress that different socialist governments have been making and, you know, uh, the communist cause. And then I'm going to post a link for my book, but you can contact me directly if you want to buy it from me. I'll mail it to you or you can buy it on Amazon. And uh, I hope all of you have a very good day, uh, good night, whatever it is. Thank you for watching. Uh, see you later.